The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 470 Cute Little Ponies The lay maple, Shinespark, and Niala climbed back up the staircase to the hospital's main tunnels, visibly shaken. I hope Puddles is all right, Maple whispered with eyes the size of cantaloupes. That can't have been a good position to be in for a fall. And now if Marina finds out we hurt her daughter's body... Why did you break the pipe? Shinespark growled, helpless and unable to do anything about it. We should have known it was a trick. We did know it was a trick. I'm sure of it. And you did it anyway. Yeah? Well, why didn't you stop me? Valise shut a glare back at her. Besides, there was totally a recorder. Something tells me we'd actually be in really big trouble if... Don't say it, Niala urged. What if these halls have recorders too? Valise sighed. Oh, bananas. For the record, we all got played. I was too busy focusing on other stuff to pay attention. Should have been thinking things through more. Maybe should have flown down that hole to check what happened. Other things, Maple murmured. Like what had been done to her? Those had to be some sort of treatment, right? Was she lying about it? Shinespark's aura settled over her muzzle, preventing her from finishing. Niala's right. I have some things to tell you on the matter, and something tells me Valet does too, but not here. We should move first. Everyone fell silent, traveling to the elevator under a cloud of shame and worry. Valet's mind occasionally flickered with images of her and Yala and Icereach, of interrupted research and an exploded windigo heart and her arch-enemy trapped beneath a wave of ice. Those things should have been at the forefront, along with how to keep her friends safe, but to her immense frustration that space was occupied by the memory of giving Puddles a hug. Why? She had Amber waiting for her back in Riverfall. What about being loyal and all that good stuff? And she'd done a perfect job of it until today, when she'd ran into Crystal and had her attentions exploited as some planned-out lecture, and now there was Puddles, who was a Wendigo, and even just... Thoughts swirling like a whirlpool of pony fur, she barely even noticed a small prickle in her cutie mark. As the elevator doors opened, they stepped in, the doors closed again, and it began to rise. Hiya! Puddles' voice sang, and something fluffy hit her from above, flipping her on her back before she could so much as blink. You! Niala gasped, metal hooves clanking against the floor. She whirled and nearly fell. Oh! How did you get free? Shinespark dropped into a battle stance, horn lighting and frantically reaching for the elevator's emergency stop button. But before she could press it with her telekinesis, Puddles tapped the floor with a forehoof and a jet of frost lanced along the tiles like a lightning bolt, climbing the wall and exploding out into a tiny fan of ice shards that destroyed the control box. Noob, she hummed. I want to get off at the first floor. Maple stood her ground, mouth wide open in surprise. Does your personality change every time we meet you? What's going on? How are you free? Forget about her, Demeter! Get her off me! Valet grunted, flat on her back and being straddled, legs spinned by the augmented Earth Pony's superior weight and strength. Urgh, break the light! I can't shadow sneak like this! Then Puddles lay down, changing Valet from being pinned to caught in a full body hog. Hee! She grinned ecstatically, leaning in and closing her eyes and nuzzling Valet heavily with her cheek, causing the mare's wings to shoot out. Ah, you're so fuzzy. I told you I'd give you a hug someday. I did do that, right? I don't really remember. Flash! Shinespark's blue aura congealed around her, lifting her into the air, along with a too stunned to struggle of a lay whom she wouldn't let go. Get off my friend, Shinespark warned, stomping. Puddles gently dropped Valet, then pumped a hoof in wild victory, switching to her billowing, metallic, wintry voice. Yes! Oh, baby, yes! <laughs> I wanted to do that for absolutely forever! Woo! Booyah! Take that, all of Windigo kind! I roll, you drool! Puddles is free! Everyone winced, the harsh sound of her voice echoing around the tiny elevator as it rose, though Valet was slightly too stunned from her treatment to do more than fold her ears. Puddles blinked, switching back to her normal mare voice. Two thousand years is forever, right? 
I feel awesome. Anyway, thanks for letting me out, you cute ponies. And unnatural suit of armor, even though you were Killjoy, and I can't hug you. Hey, Bat, I have to skip town now, because there's going to be lots of angry scientists flailing around after me. But come looking for me sometime. We could go on a date, and next time I'll give you a kiss. Well, they replied, eyes so unfocused they were round, and wings deadlocked as she lay on the ground where she had been dropped. Valet? Valet, get up! Maple ran to her side and lifted her head. What did she do to you? We need you right now! The elevator dinged to a stop, and its door slid open, somehow functioning without the control box. Puddles looked up. Oh, this is my stop. I'll give you a hug, too, if you let me go, cute unicorn. Shinespark grimaced. That is vaguely disturbing, and I'm not letting you go. Now, Fuddle shrugged, once again speaking like a metal avalanche. Ha! Huh. She clearly thinks I'm cute. You're lost! She clapped her four hoofs together, spinning to face Shinespark midair, and a frosty blue light burned from beneath them. Using herself as a base for conjuring ice, Puddles flung her hoofs forward, and a pillar of ice erupted, lovingly sculpted into a statue of a hoof that punched Shinespark in the face. Her concentration failed and Puddles fell, landing upright on her hooves. Uh, like I said, Puddles announced, a shaying out of the elevator with a heavy swish in her tail. She picked Shinespark up and put her back on her hooves as she passed, giving her the briefest of nuzzles in consolation. You're lost. Now, who knows where to find a coat track to rob? My flanks look ugly. The ice hoof shattered as Puddles tossed it over her shoulder, strewing ice all over the hallway. Her flanks definitely were attention-grabbing, and not in a good way, still riddled with fresh welts and bandages where something had stabbed at a cutie mark. She tapped her chin as she walked. Hmm, should I go cute or cool? I have no idea what's hip in media these days, and I only get one big entrance. Not so fast, you! Valet growled back on her hooves, even though her wings were still stuck out as far as they could go. I've been having a really frustrating day, and you've contributed more than your fair share! You better be ready to get pounded and locked up again because I'm not slowing down. Puddles burst her lips in confusion, and then her eyes widened in happiness. Frustration! Yay! I can help swash! Valet flashed by her with a burst of speed, wings getting in the way and confining her to ground-based combat. A hoof struck Puddles in the side, unbalancing her, and then Valet kicked off a wall, launching herself and coming down from above. She tackled Puddles into a grapple, the two hitting the ground and rolling painfully into a corner, Valet locking her down with all four legs. I got her, Valet hissed, wincing from rolling over her wings. Sparky, quick while she's- You gave me another hug! Puddles cheered, thrilled by the encounter's outcome. Ah, oh, you wanted to say bye and that you'll miss me. You're the best. I'll miss you too. Mmm. What's going on here? An authoritative voice demanded, and three doctors and lab coats ran to the corner. There's been commotion everywhere and- Hey, you two, get off the ground! Puddles blinked. Uh-oh. See you later, cute bat. I gotta run. With no effort whatsoever, she disentangled herself from Valet's headlock, rolling upright and standing to face the stallions. Hey, nerds! Be careful, Niala urged the doctors. She's dangerous. The shortest doctor, a mayor, smiled and shook her head. We carry sedatives for just that purpose. Stand down, please. Puddles stuck out her tongue and smirked. Sorry, I've already got my fan club, and when there's only one of me, you gotta pick the very best to hang out with. So take a hike, losers. The lead doctor frowned, levitating a dart tube in his aura and taking swift aim at Puddles. <laughs> with lightning reflexes, Puddles raised a hoof and tapped the incoming dart from the side inches before it embedded itself in her neck. With a flash, it transformed into an icy sphere, and when she lowered her head, caught it on a rump, juggled it once along her back like it was a toy ball, and bucked it with impressive fury toward the three doctors. Yo, watch it! Back on her hooves already, Valet tackled the middle one to the side, and the cannonball shot through, tearing a hole in the far wall from the speed at which it had been launched. Puddles glanced between the hole and her hooves in surprise. Ooh, I'm strong! Oh, your building codes are dumpy, which wouldn't surprise me given how fast you made this place. Anyway, I need a coat, and your tacky ones will have to do. Stand aside. She reared into the air and slammed both forehooves down, sending a wave of sheet ice racing across the floor. Flaine Shinespark had the sense and ability to jump and Niala lifted Maple, but the three doctors were all touching the floor when it passed, and their hooves were suddenly frozen in place. Crack! 
Niala's brute armor strength freed her from the prison, but everyone had slippery ice to contend with, and Shine Spark flat out fell as Puddles made a show of ice skating past them to the doctors, gliding on the tips of her hooves. Hmm, Puddles sized him up. Two stallions, new no and new. No. Miss Mayor, your code looks like my size. Here, gimme. With a quick flurry of hoof work, including briefly unfreezing the mare's forehoofs, Puddles seized the coat for herself, tossing it on and whirling to make it billow. Ooh, maybe this does look good on me, she decided, her cutie mark completely covered. What do you think, Docs? The two stallions looked angry. The now undressed mare's cheeks were burning. Puddles saw her redness and folded her ears. Ah, you do look a little nicer with this on. Here, have a hug to remember me by. She leaned in and gave a pat and a nuzzle, which made the mare's situation far worse. Yo! The lady tapped Maple and Shines back on the shoulders while Puddles was distracted, keeping her voice low and having found a good balance on the ice. I can't fight that. She's got my number. I'm gonna bail and get help. If she hugs you, hug back and keep her happy because it's a whole lot better than anything else she could be doing. I'll be back. The lady took off down the hall in the direction of the lobby, leaving Puddles standing up and blinking. Huh? Hey, wait for me! Oh, no, you don't, Maple hissed, preparing to oppose her, a large chunk of fallen ice already stored in her cutie mark and ready to use for a fight. Stay here, Puddles. The rest of us aren't going anywhere. While Puddles was distracted, the mare she had released to torment crept away, ears flat with embarrassment until she was twice out of hoof reach, and then lunged, grappling the nearest fire alarm on the wall. Beep! 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 Emergency lights began to blare in the corridor as sirens swept the building, the noise bleeding out into the plaza and to the adjacent school and mansion. The sounds of doors slamming echoed in the distance, and Puddles had just enough time to give a worried glance at the mare who had sounded the alarm before more and more griffins and ponies piled into the corridor, looking for a way out. Uh, yay, Puddles frowned. Sounds like my cue to get out of here, and honestly, the cute pony thing is getting old, so... See you later, dweebs! <laughs> Puddles twirled on a hoof and leapt, crashing through a closed window and breaking outside. Ah! Gah! Valet panted, skidding into the central plaza, running with her wings still stuck out wide. The sky goat was gone from its mooring above the commerce building, and she couldn't fly like this to chase it down. She was too late. Bananas! Who did she go to? The hospital behind her was erupting in a cacophony of noise. Someone had sounded an alarm. Did Isvald even have a military for crises like these? She was sure someone somewhere had mentioned it didn't. Who could she go to? She was the strongest one left in the city, and a fighting style revolving around grapples, punches, and close contact would be absolutely impossible for her to fight puddles with. Mind clouded with hormones, she cursed the fact that no one in Iron Ridge had ever had the skill and guile to turn the occasionally favored tactic of her own back against her, letting her know she was weak to it. She didn't get the chance to decide, as one of the hospital's buildings exploded in a shower of glass, white doctor's robe, and the mayor that was currently the bane of her existence. Puddles straightened up and met her eyes from across the plaza, then the only two creatures who stood still, as others fled, rushed to duty, or merely shrieked their heads off as the hospital continued to blare. Then Puddles was at her side, sitting up close next to the plaza's central fountain, its statue depicting a griffin, a pony, and a bat pony, all playing together in harmony. Hey ya, uh, Puddles greeted, a sultry look on her face. Yeah, yeah, Valet replied, still unable to force her wings down. Look, it's Valdi's not prepared to deal with something like you. I'm not either, but for totally different reasons, and I can and will overcome those to beat you because no one else can. Bananas, I have like zero attachment to the sound, but that's still a lot better than Anwich, and I fought you guys there too. So, ready to tango? Puddles licked her lips. Is Valdi not ready? Didn't I tell you what I want? A life of high and wild living, enjoying all the pleasures and fun things ponies do that disharmonic creatures can never have. Anyone can rage and cover the town in ice. Any one of my less fortunate siblings, at least. But why make ice when you can make... Her hooves glowed, and she thrust them into the fountain pool. Pillars of ice soared out, rising, intertwining, sculpting themselves by her magic until their crystalline structure morphed into something smooth, and they took on form. In less than three seconds, the central statue was gone, encased in an ice sculpture of valet and puddles, locked together in a passionate dance. Puddles raised an eyebrow when she was finished. You know, 
I've already got a mere friend, if that's what you're suggesting, Willie Warren. Your hugs are not appreciated. You can go take a hike. Oh? Puddles raised an eyebrow. You certainly seem to appreciate them in a moment. You even offered me one first. And why wasn't your mare friend hugging you first? Because I'm horny, and she's a continent away. Valet evenly met her stare. You want to mess with respect and friendship and stuff? That starts by listening when others tell you what they want. I listen. Puddles shrugged in self-defense. I just don't care. And you shouldn't either. I'm immortal. Your lifespan is piddly next to mine. You don't have time for playing the nice game like I do, so why are you the one telling me to do it? She gave a hungry smile. It's confusing. Interesting. I like it. Valet stomped a huff. Yeah, well, go jump in a lake. I'm not eligible. Puddles put on a pout. Not even going to put up with poor, confused, chaotic puddles and teach her how to be a decent pony? Ah, how mean. Her grin returned. I like mean, too, you know. And maybe I forgot, but I don't think I ever caught your name. It's Valavely Hest. What are you trying to blackmail me into? Eloping, Puddle shrugged. The teleportation guild is right there, and they wouldn't dare refuse passage to someone who can freeze them and smash them into tiny, icy pony bits. Which I'd never actually do, because pony bits are precious, but they don't know that. Also, we're starting to attract attention. A crowd was gathering, most staying at the edge of the plaza, a mix of hospital evacuees who were unknowingly running straight into the cause, and dwellers of the other five buildings. Valley winced. You know what? Puddles looked around at the crowd and flashed them a cheery grin. Let's make this dramatic. We can talk about it later. Valley's eyes narrowed as Puddles' hoofs began to glow. Again, the mayor stomped down and Valley preemptively backflipped, wings still not working right, to dodge the wave of ice. But instead of a sheet along the ground, crystals blossomed beneath Puddles' hoofs, growing upward into a pillar with her on top. Puddles launched herself over Valet's head, flinging herself off it into a leap, and Valet was unable to return to the ground to move before Puddles hit her. It's bye-bye time, Puddles sang in her ear, and an icy hoof touched her cheek. Valet winced from the contact and tried to move, but her whole body became cold, sluggish, and Puddles tapped her limbs one by one, disabling them with frost. Arrgh! Valet shivered, barely able to do even that as she was thrown across Puddles' back. Let go! No. Puddles started walking with a bounce in her step, careful not to jostle Valet too much on her back. I like you, so we're running away. Hold on tight. One of her steps sent a fork of ice crackling along the ground, which hit the administration's building's doors and tore them off their hinges. Another sent the ice flying behind her, two bolts in quick succession targeting the orange form of Shinespark who was chasing them, the first causing her to jump and the second freezing her at the exact place she touched down. A fourth caused a fan of ice blades to spring up in the Alice path, the armor's weight not sufficient to smash through them as she collided against the opposite side. See you later, cute ponies, Puddles sang, humming a Firefly Sisters tune under her breath as she carried Valet into the administration building. End of chapter 470